In this video, I'm going to be giving an overview of the PyCharm Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, for Python. And I'm going to be working with the assumption that you have spent little or no time with either Python or PyCharm. And PyCharm can be a little daunting at first. And since it's just a tool, really, for getting the work in Python done, it makes sense to sort of boil it down to the things that you'll most commonly want to do. The term IDE is an acronym for a class of software that provides a complete development environment. This can be a bit of an overkill when you're just getting started learning Python. In general, an IDE will have some kind of text editor, some kind of debugging facility, and some kind of build or packaging tools. A lot of them also integrate version control, and PyCharm has all of this and a lot more. So we're going to go ahead and get started, and I've already launched PyCharm, and if you're launching it for the first time, it should look something like this. And the way I got to this was I have an install of Anaconda, and if you have a recent install of Anaconda, then you already have this tile in here that says PyCharm, and you can click on Launch to get it going. So it is installed now by default with Anaconda, and you can launch it separately, but this may be just the easiest way to get at it. So not a lot of choices here from our home screen. Uh, we're either going to create a new project or open. And if I click open and we haven't created any projects, it's likely going to just point at your home directory and then it's going to try to index all of the files in that home directory. So it's probably not a good idea to do that at first. So we're going to click on create new project. It's going to bring you to the screen. It's going to want you to give it a name. And so I'm just going to call it Python files. And every time you create a new project in PyCharm, it does some indexing, which takes some time. And so if you're not doing a real development, then probably every time you're going to want to work with PyCharm, you can just have a sort of home project that you can go and make files in for whatever script you're trying to build. The next thing I'm going to do is select my interpreter. All right. And uh, you can make a virtual environment. All right, so I have a couple of choices for doing that. And depending on your system, it may look a little bit different than this. All right, but I'm going to select Conda so that it looks at that Conda Python interpreter. Okay, and depending on the version of Conda that you have installed, uh, you may want to select a different a Python version. All right, I'm going to select 3.7, and then I'm going to click Create. And since this is our first project, I'm going to get this tip of the day screen. All right. And uh, I'm going to check the box that says don't show tips. You can decide how you want to do that, but I'm going to turn it off. You can, if you like, click through a few of the tips. All right. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and close it. All right. And it does take just a little bit of time to build the project. You can see it's still sort of working on something down here. There's that indexing that I mentioned. Okay, with our project built, we're ready to go ahead and get started here. And I will go ahead and maximize the screen. I do want to point out that I'm working in a Mac. Most things will be similar, if not the same, in the Windows environment. And I'll try to point out where the differences are. The first thing I'm going to want to do here is probably uh, set some preferences in PyCharm. All right, and for the Mac version, I'm going to go to the PyCharm menu and select preferences. In Windows, you're going to find it under File and somewhere around the middle, Settings. All right, and there is a lot of stuff inside PyCharm. All right, so uh, when I go to Preferences, then I'm presented with all of the different preferences. All right, sometimes you know exactly what you want to get to, and you don't want to go through the menu system. If you press the Shift key twice, it will open the Find menu, and I can just go and select whatever it is I'm looking for. So settings. All right, so we're back to that original screen and uh, we can see the general settings here. I'm going to work on the editor settings for the most part. All right, and just to get back to where we were, when you install it, the default is either going to be this Darkula or IntelliJ Lite. All right, and by default, it, it's probably Darkula. All right, and uh, that just indicates that, okay, we have this dark background and it, it also sets some uh, other things like uh, the, the different font colors 
that are used in different coding sequences. All right, I'm going to first off go to plugins and I'm going to install a different color theme. All right, and so you could find all of the themes by just typing the word theme. Okay, and I'll leave it up to you to install a couple of these and decide which one you like. I'm going to use this one atom theme. Okay, and we can see there are a few here. Uh, I'm actually going to install two things. I'm going to install this atom material icons. And uh, what that's going to do is uh, install some different icons for the different menus and tabs, make them stand out a little better. The first time you install something that is from a developer other than PyCharm, uh, you're going to get this warning. And yes, we're just going to go ahead and accept it. And then I'm going to install this Atom One Dark theme. Okay, so you can see what happened. It changes the background a bit. Once I do that, I'm going to click Apply. And then you'll notice that, okay, some of these icons that are used in the different areas of the PyCharm window uh, have been updated. All right, I like it because uh, you tend not to be able to easily find some of these things and, and the little icons help you do that. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is go to editor and I'm going to, you can either select from the menu here or you can expand the menu and uh, I'm going to go to color scheme. That's what the background settings are. All right, and uh, I'm going to go to color scheme font and uh, I'm going to make it bigger. All right, you can set it any way you like, and you can see that it sort of gives you an idea of how big different settings will be. All right, and then uh, when we run our files, they get run in the console, and so I'm going to also update the console font settings. All right, and there are a number of other plugins you can add, but you want to be careful not to add too many because PyCharm itself already uses a lot of resources, and if you add a bunch of add-ins, it's just going to be that much more of a drain on your computer's memory. All right, but some people add things like Kite, all right, which is a machine learning based code completion software. All right, PyCharm does have code completion built in. Some people like Kite better. Uh, you can install that probably safely. Uh, some people install uh, more code coloring. Uh, this, this plugin called Rainbow Brackets is often used, and you can get an idea of what it does down here if you have lots of parentheses so it's easier to find which ones go with which. Uh, they add coloration. Okay, I'm going to leave it as is. And so now we're ready to probably make a Python file. And there's a couple of ways to do this. I can hover over the project name and then select new. All right, we have different options for what kind of file we want to start. Uh, you can also get it from the file menu. All right, again, new. All right, so we'll make a new Python file. It's going to want us to give it a name, so I'll just call it demo. All right, and then we, you see we have different options for what kind of Python file. All right, and probably as you get going, it's just going to be a standard Python file. All right, so no great shakes here. Uh, we're just presented with a blank screen, and uh, now we're ready to go ahead and start writing some code. All right, and this is probably the most helpful thing that people getting going with this have. All right, and it, there is code completion. So as you start typing, the PyCharm code completion tries to figure out what you want. And once you see an option here, you can either hit enter or tab to select whatever's highlighted. And the first thing that highlighted was print. So we're going to select that, and then as I put a string in here, you'll notice that, oh, when I open the quotation marks, it also closed the quotation marks for me. All right, so these are the kinds of things that people find helpful uh, with the IDE. All right, but if you uh, just want to directly open it, you can hold the control key and press space. So there are dozens of shortcuts that are built into PyCharm to help you get your work done more quickly. And most of them start with the control key. All right, so probably limited use for that one, but in case you do want to open the menu, uh, that's how you do it. Uh, we'll go on and make some variables here. And then maybe we want to do something like calculate the area of a circle. So I'll import math. And then probably we want the constant pi. And we'll get that from math.pi. And then we'll calculate an area. And it'll be the pi pi r squared. All right, so x representing our radius. And then we can go ahead and print out our values here. 
Okay, and then maybe we decide that x is not a good variable name, all right, for many reasons. All right, maybe we want to call it radius, and, and maybe the code's a little bit more complex than it is here where x just appears twice, but even still, all right, we're going to have to, if we want to change this variable name, go through, find every instance of it, and, and change that. And this is often called refactoring. It's one version or one method uh, of refactoring where you just have to rename variable names. All right, there are other more complex refactorings, all right, but this is probably good enough to get started with. And to open the refactoring menu, I'm going to hold Control and press T. And you can see all the options that you have. I'm just going to select Rename, and we're going to go ahead and rename x to radius and then I'm going to press refactor and you see that it goes through and wherever x appeared it was replaced with radius. All right, So this is a very helpful tool. All right, So again it's control T to open that renaming menu. All right, a lot of times when you're writing Python uh, you have some code that you want to run and other code that you do not want to run and so if we don't want to run print right we can comment it out with the hashtag. All right, so that's pretty simple. All right, but what if we have several lines of code that we don't want to run? Uh, I'd have to go through one by one and use that hashtag there. All right, and so there is a shortcut for this. It's command and the forward slash in Mac. It's control and the forward slash in Windows. And then if you want to quickly undo it, it's command and forward slash again. All right. If you decide you want to reorganize your code, right, you want to print the radius after the area, you would have to select it and cut and paste it. Uh, there's a shortcut for doing that. Okay. In the Mac, it is hold command and shift and press the down arrow or up arrow to move it up. All right. And in Windows, it's control shift and up or down arrow. Okay, another shortcut that can be helpful is the surround menu. And so in Mac, it's command alt and T, and it opens up different structures that we often want to surround our code with. So if we want to stick the print statements inside an if statement, we see that we can do that with a click of a button. All right, and it added a condition. It adds a default true condition, so this will definitely run. All right, and if we wanted multiple lines to be surrounded, uh, we would have selected those first. Okay, so those should be the most common shortcuts that can help you. All right, and then after that, you probably want to know how do we even run this file. All right, so the easiest way from the starting place here is to go to the run menu or you can right click somewhere in the code window and select run. Now before you run a file for its first time it needs a configuration and basically here what that means is it needs to know what file you want to run. And it may seem obvious but it's a little peccadillo of PyCharm, okay, because obviously it's the only file here and obviously that's what we want to run. But you may have many files in the window working and then it becomes more of a challenge to figure out, well, when you said run, did you mean run everything or do you mean just run this file? Okay, and so uh, to start with, it's probably easy to just go to the run demo and by default, when we select the run menu the first time, it's just going to indicate that you must want to run this file. And if we go into configuration, we'll see that what got added was the name of the file that we want to run. Okay, so this, we'll just kind of spread it out here because this is where we're going to work for just a few minutes. This is what happens when you run a file and uh, it gets run in a console. When it gets run, it's done. You can't interact with any of this anymore. All right, so we can see that, you know, we printed out our area, we printed out our first statement, all right, and then we printed out our radius. All right, so we're done. Uh, maybe it does what we want it to do. Maybe we want to add to it. But as far as this is concerned, uh, we can't no longer work with this file. Okay, there's two other ways we can work with this. All right, and the, the most common way is going to be uh, from the Python console. All right, and the benefit of the Python console is if I run 
the file in the console, I'm still going to be able to interact with these variables and do other things to them uh, before I make changes to the code. All right, and so the only difference here is instead of selecting the run menu, we're going to run the file in the Python console. All right, and so now, just to give you an idea, if I call pi, it's going to return it. If I call radius, all right, and you can see that we can use that completion menu down here. Uh, it's going to tell me what that value is. All right, so then I can make my changes if I want. Uh, I can start them down here to see how they'll look, and then I can code them up here in the editor window. And then to run it again, I just click that run again. Okay, and we'll just note that it is showing us all the variables that are valued in our program, and that also may be helpful. All right, so depending on what you want to do, uh, you may want to run in the Python console rather than in the static PyCharm console. Okay, and then just so you know, if I am just getting started, it's probably okay to just put all of my script files in this Python files folder. All right, so I don't have to start a new project every time I just want to do something very simple. All right, I can have a sort of a repository for doing that. And I'm saying it's called Python files. And then, right, every time I want to add something, I'm going to, right, select new Python file, give it a name. Okay, and then I can just sort of go ahead and write my code here. Now, the reason I did that was just to point out something that even though I have a new Python file, and uh, it's all ready to go. It may have different code than the first one. You'll just notice that the configuration is pointing at the first file. So this throws people off a lot at first. Uh, you're going to have to pick which file to run when you select run from the run menu here. All right, right now uh, it, it, it is pointed at another file. All right, so you just want to make sure that uh, you are selecting run another demo. All right, and uh, if you do that the first time, it's going to set up the configuration for you. Uh, if you run it from the Python console, it is in all likelihood just going to go ahead and run that demo file. All right, so once again, just to point at the right file to make sure, right, we can go in to the configuration settings and we'll just append on the correct name. Okay, and the last thing, if you ever get to a place where you're like, wow, I wish I hadn't done that to PyCharm. Now I don't know how to get back to the way it was. All right, there is a way to do that. And if you go to the file menu and then manage IDE settings, you can restore the default. All right, this is going to get rid of anything that you may have previously installed. Uh, and it may be sort of a last resort to sort of get back to the way it was. Uh, you would have to install anything again that you, that you wanted. All right, so that should help you get started with PyCharm.